This video walks through the customizing modules learning exercise, which is really the starting point for learning how to build and customize your own modules. Now, the time at which you'd start thinking about customizing a module is after you've either started with a dynamic template or you've inserted modules into a modular workbook and you've reached a point where you're not happy with the drivers and you don't have existing modules you can use to actually automate the process of building your model. So in that instance, the next fallback option you have is to customize an existing module because you really only want to create modules from scratch when you really have to. Now in this example, we have a really basic model. It doesn't even contain a balance sheet or anything. It's really just demonstrative of what we're trying to demonstrate in this course. And that's the revenue expenses, the sheet. We're going to customize the division one revenue module to allow for discount assumptions to be entered by the user. So it's a really basic example of a customization, but it does highlight a lot of the principles that are used to do really advanced customizations. Now, before jumping into this customization, we touched on module components in the automation fundamentals exercise. It's really important to understand where module components are before you start customizing. Now, on this page, we have three components from three different modules, division one, division two, and operating expansion modules, and the components span the rows with a spacer row above their header row, they basically span blocks down the page. Now, the best way to see those blocks is to switch on cell block shading, which you can do via the cell blocks menu and switch on. I always use rows around selection. Um, you, you have a whole lot of options. Another way to do that is to do control full stop, which toggles it off and on. And what that does, it shows you where the component rows are and where the actual blocks of categories are within those components. Now, these blocks, or these blocks are called cell blocks. And there's actually, within categories, a cell block will actually span rows when you have category blocks like this. Um, but you still, on this component, you have a cell block in cell A10, a cell block with the heading division one assumptions in B10, and then you actually have a cell block that spans this filler row for the heading one, and then you have another cell block for the headings, another cell block for the assumptions here, and you have another cell block for the total revenue heading, another cell block for the total. So the way to think about module components within modules is you have modules with components and the components contain the Excel content, which are located in cell blocks. And that's what you create and edit when you're customizing modules. So in this case, we're going to edit this module so that the current forecast assumptions for the three products are actually the base amounts. And we're going to add another block of assumptions for discounts for each category. Now, it's important to bear in mind while doing this that we need to use the appropriate formats and styles because cells containing assumptions that the user will need to change uh, will need to be formatted in assumption styles, whereas cells containing non-assumptions, such as formulas and headings, will need to be non-assumptions. So let's insert a row for the base revenue heading because that's what this block of assumptions is now going to be. And after doing that, let's apply a heading three star, which is LO3. And you'll see it automatically formats it as a constant because it's a constant. And then we need to update this heading and make this equals total. And I'm going to make this a mixed cell formula. And you'll see that's gone green. And that's one of the benefits of using modular spreadsheet development is the actual content is automatically updated if you've got that setting on in your options. So let's put a couple of rows in below there. And we're going to put a heading here for discounts. So discounts. And again, apply a heading LO3, heading three to that. Now, to collect our discounts assumptions, we need another block of categories for those assumptions. Now, it's important in modules to understand how categories work. Now, in modules, categories are stored in category blocks in Excel, which is what these rows are across 13 to 16, including a total row. And related blocks of categories are stored in what are called categories groups. Now, to look at what the categories groups are in a module, you can go to the Build tab, Categories Blocks menu, and you can go to the Categories Groups dialog box. And you can see here our module division one contains one categories group called Revenue, and that contains two category blocks, the Assumptions block and the Outputs block. Now, we need to add another block for discounts to our assumptions. And to do that, all we need to do is insert a row, and I'm just going to put a formula in equaling the first category of an existing category block in the revenue categories group. And when I press enter, it automatically adds the block for those rows. So now if I add categories to any of these blocks, add them now to the one down below because they're related category blocks in the same categories group. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply a heading four. I'm going to delete the total because we don't need that. And then you'll notice if you go across here, if I go and type an assumption in here, so I put in say 10%, it does it to all of them. It creates a new cell block in that category block. But the problem is if I change any of these numbers, it changes all of them. Now that's because I haven't applied an assumption style to that cell block, 
which is what's necessary if I want to be able to change numbers like I have in this block up here. So if I apply an assumption style, Alt L A, and in this case, I want a percentage style. So I'm going to apply a percentage style. And if I turn off cell block shading, you can see it's just applied the normal percentage assumption style from my options. And then I can do Control R and fill right. So that's how we go about applying assumptions, styles, and creating category blocks that relate to existing categories blocks, and therefore in the same categories group. Now just to verify that we've added a category block to the existing categories group, we can go to the categories group dialog, and you can see the categories groups dialog, we still have one categories group, but we now have three category blocks within it. So we know that any category additions to any of those blocks will get added to all of them in that group. Okay, so now we've applied assumption style to this to this cell block. I can go in and put some assumptions in. I'll just put 10% in the first row. And say 5% in the second row, just so we can see when we amend our outputs what's going on. And then I'm going to go to the outputs. And this is no longer total base revenue, it's just total revenue. So I can type over this and you'll see that it will go from being a formula to a constant, which is why it's gone blue. And then I can just amend this formula. Now, with category blocks in modules, you don't need to change all cells in the formula, you just need to, you just need to change one in a block of categories or even across a row on a total only row and they'll all update as long as they're in the same cell block. So I'm just going to multiply this by one minus the discount rate that I've put in for each assumption and you'll see the whole block because that's a cell block, the whole block updates. And that completes the customization of the revenue module. Now something we should always do after customizing a module before saving the file is go to our auditing menu and run the module content report tool. Now the module content report tool is a supplementary tool to the search and repair tool in that you should run it along with the search and repair tool before you save your workbook after any customizations to anything other than assumptions. And it will actually locate anything in your module, which is, for example, you know, broken links, um, content that's not being referenced with formulas, etc. There's a whole range of things that it will find um, that, that basically determine whether your module has been built according with modular development best practices. In this case, there are no issues, so we can run that just to be safe and it's fine. Okay, so now that we've completed customizing our Division 1 revenue module, we decide we actually want to put this in a library and use it going forward in other models or potentially share it with people or even upload it to the Madonna website and share it with my entire team. So to do that, you could leave it in this workbook and just insert it from this workbook, but the best thing to do is actually export this module to file. So to export a particular module from a workbook to file, go to the go to the Madano tab, module menu, and click export to file. Choose the module, in this case, what we customized was the division one revenue module, and we're going to export this to file. What this does is puts that module in its own workbook in what's called a module file. Now module files are different to modular workbooks in that from an Excel perspective, they are still just a workbook that looks just like a modular workbook, but they have two asterisks in them and they are limited to one module other than the time series module and checks modules. So in this case, this module file, which has come out, it's always got Madano hyphen at the front when it's a module file and two asterisks, and it contains assumptions. And you can see it's picked up my, my customizations to the discounts and my outputs. It's reset my assumptions back to the default values, which you can change if you like by setting default values and basically created a standalone file. Now you can tell a module file because when you go to save this file, it will actually save as a module. 